Hi, Kevin Coop here, and this is FaceTime with the Content Guy. Once again, I'm on the road, and uh, to those of you who complained the last time I did one of these, the bed is made. You know, I grew up at a time when the, the phrase generation gap was a, well, was a popular term. It had uh, a lot of meaning for a lot of us because it signified the cultural and political divide that often separated us from our parents making it impossible for us to talk to them about pretty much anything, uh, except maybe get a haircut, um, although I could always talk to my dad about baseball. Uh, I was thinking about the whole notion of a generation gap this week because I was talking to a, a guy who mentioned to me that of his three children, only one of them, his youngest daughter, actually has a checkbook. Um, and the only reason she got a checkbook, and she thought it was a total pain in the neck, was because she was renting an apartment and the landlord required a personal check. Um, uh, the others, uh, they, uh, her other kids, they didn't need a checkbook. You know, they found other ways to pay their rent. You know, I'd never really thought about it before, but he's right. I have three kids and I, none of them have checkbooks. They have checking accounts, but they make their payments online. Uh, they, this, the idea of having a checkbook just seems irrelevant to them. I'm pretty sure they know how to write a check, uh, but I think I may have to check when I get home. Along the same lines, I was in an airport lounge recently, and I was sitting across from a woman who was on the phone with her office. And it was really interesting because she, she was telling this guy that she had a package that had to be mailed. And then she had to walk the guy through the process of, okay, here's what you do with the package when you get to the post office. It was like, I don't know how old this guy was. He had to be in his 20s, I guess. Um, and he'd never really been to the post office. Again, it was an experience that was irrelevant to him. Uh, this is sort of funny when you think about how much time we spend talking about the United States Postal Service. Uh, you know, they, maybe they've just outlived their usefulness, and maybe it's even worse than I think it is. You know, this is the world today. You know, um, things that are familiar to us, that have been important to us, that have been part of our everyday lives for, for as long as we can remember, simply are not important, are not relevant, and, and maybe completely inconsequential to the next generation of consumers. You know, I love the description of, of uh, young people. You know, this next generation is digital natives, while well, we're digital immigrants. Meaning that, you know, they were, you know, they can't remember a time without the internet, without computers, without smartphones or cell phones. They can't remember a time without iPods and iTunes. You know, this is the world that they were born into and they can't remember it. You know, we're digital immigrants. We have to learn the language, but we do have to learn it. Which is why, I have to be honest, it continues to concern me and amaze me that, you know, I give a lot of speeches around the country and I generally ask audiences uh, a question. Um, especially in the grocery industry, I see how many people here have ever ordered groceries from Amazon.com? How many people here have ever been on an Amazon's grocery pages? How many people here even know that Amazon sells groceries? And it's extraordinary to me how many people simply don't know it, are paying absolutely no attention to it. You know, it, it's just something I really worry about. I'm not saying that Amazon is the be-all and end-all of e greed grocery, but you got to know what they're doing. They tend to be a factor in any category they enter. You know, I'm beginning to feel a little bit like John the Baptist, but it's, that's what the, the, if that's my fate, that's what I'm going to do. No matter what you sell, whether it's groceries or whatever, you ought to be going to Amazon and figuring out if they are selling the stuff that you're selling. And if they are, you better figure out how to compete either by finding your own way to go online or developing a brick-and-mortar solution that is highly competitive or maybe doing both, okay? I think that's what you have to do, but you can't afford to be a victim of a generation gap. Anyway, that's what's on my mind, and as always, I want to hear what's on your mind.